at this sweet shop in Mumbai, everywhere you look, it's Narendra Modi. Workers here are preparing two tons of treats for an epic celebration. These people, they are from Bengal, and they say that, no, we want change. We want change in the uh, government over there, so we'll make masks with Modi masks. We'll make laddus with Modi masks. The store received its massive order from Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bhartiya Janta Party. It's celebrating a landslide victory in the world's biggest elections. Today, we are witnessing that citizens from every nook and corner of the country have filled this mendicant's hands. I bow my head before India's 1.3 billion citizens. Modi will enter his second term with a full plate. Economic growth slowed to 6.6% in the quarter ending December, the lowest in more than a year. Unemployment has also risen to 6.1%, the highest in 45 years. And factory output contracted slightly in March as consumption and investment growth slowed. But Modi's victory has given markets a boost. Stocks and the local currency rallied due to optimism that Modi's parliamentary majority will make way for reforms. One thing is there for sure, that there is predictability and visibility that the investors are aware of the policies of the government. So because of that, markets are up right now. Experts say Modi should use his fresh political capital to boost infrastructure spending and increase support for low-income earners. The government's also under pressure to address slowing credit growth. It's been caused by a crisis in the nation's non-bank financial sector. If Modi succeeds in his reforms, then hundreds of millions of Indians could enjoy the sweet taste of victory. Paolo Montesilio, TRT World. Well, let's get more now on Modi's victory with Rebecca Bundan, who joins us from Mumbai. Hi, Rebecca. A stunning victory for the Prime Minister, one that's even surprised some within his own party. Uh, how has Narendra Modi reacted to his win? Yes, that's right. This was very much seen as a referendum on Narendra Modi's past five years in power this election uh, since he first came to power in 2014 in that uh, landslide victory. Um, and we've seen uh, BJP supporters celebrating uh, today uh, as those, those results started to come through and it started to become clear that uh, Modi had that significant uh, lead and it just stormed ahead. Now, um, a Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he recently uh, conducted his victory speech, which was in New Delhi at the BJP, uh, that's the, the, the ruling party's uh, headquarters in the capital uh, there. Um, and he spoke uh, a lot about um, this uh, sort of now sort of putting, really putting India on the world stage. He talked about uh, this, uh, this meaning, this victory meaning that, uh, that the world would have to take note uh, of India as a superpower. Um, he talked about the, the democratic process with so many voters turning out uh, some 67% uh, in this election which is some 600 million voters he also talked about the, the achievements the reforms that the the government uh, has conducted under his leadership uh, over the the past 5 years which he contends, intends to build upon uh, over the coming years now and another point he made was about uh, uh, corruption that the government's drive uh, to to stamp out corruption he said that you know this is one of the first times where this hasn't really been a significant issue and he says he successfully uh, achieved uh, a reduction in the amount of corruption there and he says that now taxpayers could be more confident about the way their money is being used so that was one of the themes that also uh, came up but clearly you could see uh, the, the workers there the BJP workers were absolutely delighted chanting his name and just uh, clearly uh, continuous uh, celebrations going on now among uh, the party. Yes, and we know that economic issues featured prominently throughout the campaign. Uh, what are people now expecting Narendra Modi to achieve on that front?
Well, boosting economic growth and creating jobs were two of the key themes that actually helped uh, Narendra Modi come to victory in, uh, initially in 2014. Uh, it was those promises that really inspired voters and won, uh, won them over. Um, but if we, we look at the situation of job creation, uh, that hasn't been as good as people may have hoped. Uh, in terms of the economy, India is in fact the world's fastest growing major economy, but it's also recently slowed down. If we look at the latest GDP data that's available in the quarter to December, it slowed to 6.6%. So that's a worrying trend. Other figures also are suggesting that consumer spending uh, might, be, uh, might be declining somewhat, that the growth might not be as strong as people want there. So that's, that's another area of concern. Um, but certainly uh, things like inflation and so on, um, people are very, like, analysts are quite positive on that. But there are also uh, things that are really out of the government's hand if we, hands. If we look at things like oil prices, if they rise, that then feeds into inflation, uh, something the government really can't control there. Uh, and just the global economic situation as well, with those uh, trade tensions that are ongoing, that could all have an impact on India. And there's not that much that the government can do about it. Yes. And while growth has slowed down, as you, as you said, unemployment has gone up, what is he promising to do in terms of job creation in India? Job creation has been a real problem. If we look at those unemployment figures, uh, the, the official leaked data which suggests unemployment rising to uh, a multi-decade high, uh, that's a real uh, worry. In a country where you have uh, half the population that are under the age of 25, and you have one million people entering the workforce every month. So India really needs to be creating jobs at a very, very fast pace, which the data suggests it's not doing. Um, and there were reforms such as demonetization in 2016, uh, which actually impacted uh, jobs and put some people out of work because it uh, reduced uh, the amount of cash in the system. Uh, that was when India banned the two highest value banknotes suddenly. Um, also GST, the introduction of the goods and services tax, uh, which also left uh, some smaller businesses uh, struggling. Uh, but what the, the Modi government really is focusing on as it, as it continues to build uh, on its strategy strategy is really uh, looking at uh, boosting startups. That's been a, quite a positive area for India over the past few years. And uh, Narendra Modi has talked a lot about startups. It has this campaign, mm. Startup India, really wants to encourage more entrepreneurship, which again helps job creation. And that's, that is something the government says is helping uh, to boost jobs. Also, the manufacturing sector, uh, India has uh, the, its Make in India campaign, where it wants to encourage more uh, foreign companies and Indian companies to actually manufacture products within the country. Uh, this program hasn't perhaps been as successful as uh, some might have hoped over the past few years, but it's again something the government wants to continue with, with and it, it's something that would create a huge number of jobs uh, for the country, as well as continuing to try and attract more and more foreign direct investment, which is something else that, that Modi has been very focused on. Okay, Rebecca Bundan, we'll have to leave it there, but thanks so much for that update.